I think we're good to go. And so, yes, welcome to episode 16. 16. And I think we've got some people in the chat already. Who have we got? Uh, we've got uh, Peter there. Uh, so, Jeffrey Dex9, when are you adding custom emotes to Twitch? <laughs> yeah. And and yes, you are first, technically first. There we go. Uh, Christoph, hello. Apostolisk, hello. Yes. Uh, sorry for the strange timing uh, of all of this. Uh, so yes, firstly, uh, I wasn't here on Friday, so you've not missed anything. Um, I had a commitment which uh, overran, unfortunately. Uh, so uh, I decided to push everything to Sunday, and I think today will be a special one because I've changed everything. I was a bit sort of quiet and a bit reclusive yesterday, and that's because my mind and head was sort of set on doing some things for this. Uh, and <laughs> I'll talk through some of the changes tonight. Morris, greetings, Dragonai. Hello. Uh, Dragon Eyes Agg-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-
uh, which I think is this planet, and I've put in a moon. Uh, it might be a bit further. I can't remember where it was, um, but certainly one of the planets is, is orbiting the other. Anyway, that's all, all irrelevant. We'll get there. We'll get there. Is your library named Ent? Yes, it is. So I have used Ent. Uh, and we'll, we'll have a look at, at, at Ent and using it because I will say this. Uh, you know, People think, uh, oh, you know, it's Javid X9, one loan code, it never uses third party libraries. That's not true. I think if, if, if a good one exists, you should probably use it. Uh, and I want to now, I, I want us to move on from doing sort of the bare bones, absolute groundwork on some of this project and get focused on turning it into a game. Uh, and I was experimenting with Ent, and it just stuck. I actually quite liked the way that it did things. Uh, but there's something interesting about it. <laughs> One Lone Coder almost never uses third-party libraries. <laughs> yes, yeah, so, very rarely. Uh, who have we got? Go Gruffler. Gruffler, hello. Sorry. Uh, Bruno, hello. Uh, Fat Wee Wee 420, Hello. Uh, it's my first time watching you live. Oh, well, uh, this is probably going to undo all of the good that I've put, <laughs> that I've put into the YouTube channel. Uh, right. Yes, so I'm streaming on a Sunday evening. That is to make up for Friday night. Uh, so well, let's get stuck in and we'll have a look at uh, we'll have a look at Ent. Holy moly, caught you live. Oh, from Turkey. Batin Yarkin. Hello, thank you. I must say, I spent a bit of time in Turkey, specifically in Istanbul, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. What an amazing place, and what an amazing clash of cultures, just everything going on there. Really fascinating place. At least that's how it was back in 2006 when I was there. So, yes, uh, Entity Component System Systems. Um, where do we start? Well, the first thing that people will usually say to you is, oh, well, I don't program in object-oriented programming anymore. That's so not cool, right? And, and then proceed to go and program like it was 1985. And what I've learned so far about Entity Component Systems is they are object-oriented programming on steroids, right? They're not uh, the anti-object-oriented programming paradigm at all. So I'm just moving my phone out of the way to get my, uh, my drawing pen because... We don't want that image, do we? What's that one? Uh, that's the thumbnail for the video. I want uh, one note. There we go. Uh, yes, just dazzled everybody there. <laughs> Oop has valid use. Oop is great. Right? We've done everything with Oop so far. And I think a hybrid of Oop and not Oop is, is usually always the right solution. I'm just choosing a colour. And, well... The thing is, people go so object-oriented programming is 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 not good, and and there are reasons why for this specific project it's not necessarily the right approach. But let's have a look at why ECS I consider uh, to be even more object-oriented programming. But let's uh, let's say we have a class, and basically I want this class to represent some sort of transport system. And this is true in our game. I want to shuttle goods and resources around our solar system that we're making. And though we may have something like uh, if we have a, a car, for example, is one form of a transportation vehicle of some description. And we have a, a plane, right, so uh, for flight. The problem is uh, these, these objects are inheriting from transport, so they'll inherit properties such as how they can move and how fast they can go and what they can carry and all that sort of thing. And the customizations provided by the subtypes uh, may decide how they're drawn and how they interact or update how they move differently. Um, but what happens if you want a flying car? And, and that's a, a bit of a problem for object-oriented programming because you could potentially go on to sort of link these again in some awful manner like this. We could have some nice big diamond formation in our object-oriented uh, approach and actually have something called flying car. Now everybody in the Twitch chat that knows a bit about object-oriented programming will have just collectively vomited uh, in synchrony there. Let's have a quick glance at the chat and check for vomit I think. What do you think about SFML? It's not for me, I don't need it. Uh, still no dark mode for one note. Nope, don't like one note dark mode. <laughs> Pconst167, didn't know you streamed here. Uh, well, yes, I certainly do stream here. 
Uh, I see people rate small talk quite high. Uh, how did the original idea behind Oop differ from how Oop is done nowadays? Well, Oop, 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 not sort of this thing that was just invented one day. It's kind of a, it came, it was born, spawned out of a convenience of just collecting information together and then working from that. Yeah, so there you go, Christoph. You're absolutely right. And yeah, Little Bob, Diamond of Death. You've got all sorts of problems going on here. So having a system uh, which is like rigid like this is very difficult to start implementing uh, combinations of things. Uh, and you know, it is, the solution in this instance may then be to have a third subtype called Flying Car. But then I'm not using the uh, reusable parts of my car and plane classes. Just hang on. I've got the obligatory slurp down here. Not bright pink today. Uh, that's traditional Vimto, so it's uh, much, much better. Megarev is here. Hello, Megarev. Actually, I asked Megarev to create an algorithm for me because he was in the middle of doing uh, collision algorithms. And they're really good. The, sort of the stuff that he's posting on the Discord server is, is interesting stuff. And I was hoping that... Um, that he would just have one to hand. So yes, Megarev, to answer your reply, basically I was just looking if you had something sort of ready to go that I could just throw into some code. Uh, and I'm still still wanting it to. I know I can do it myself, but it's just if you had it there with your IDE open, I'd have just pinched it and used it. Well, yes, that's it. Classes can inherit multiple classes, and that's a bad thing, typically. It's not the end of the world, and sometimes you've just got to break the rules a little bit. or you know, it, It's a tool. It's one way of doing things. But... The idea of sort of a, a slightly different approach is to use something like data-oriented design, or in our case, we're using some sort of ECS. Now, it's my plan that hopefully over the next few weeks, pending obvious things going on in my life, uh, to put out a YouTube video, I think, about ECS. But I say that ECS is uh, multi it's, uh, it's multiple inheritance. It's object-oriented on steroids. So basically everything is multiple inheritance so we might have the property of being something that can transport and we have another class that describes well it transports things on roads it's a car and we have another thing that says well it's got the ability to fly and then we have some object here now this is a this is a hypothetical construct uh, but we then just basically inherit from everything so for those of you that sort of argue that ECS is not object-oriented programming, you couldn't be more wrong, in my opinion. Uh, it is absolutely, uh, from a construct point of view, uh, multiple inheritance. And so that's why it's an interesting way to solve our problem. Well, there we go, we'll get to, yeah, it's, it's, in, it's not inheritance, it's composition. Well, it kind of is inheritance, it's just, it's flat, right? So it, it's everything's inheriting from, from one object. So, okay, is it composition? Uh, well, no, not really, right? That's what I'm saying. These these objects all exist within our uh, flying car thing. And that's fundamentally sort of the difference between the two approaches. But there are some advantages. Uh, once we can describe what is a transport mechanism, so let's say this is something that carries objects. There we go. And we know that a car is something that can travel on roads. And we know that a plane means it can take off. By sort of inserting uh, these three components into some collective object, they call this, this is the entity. By attaching these components to the entity, we're, we're creating this uh, sort of this composite, uh, which, which would be something that can take off and go on roads and carry objects. It would be a flying car. Uh, and, and that's sort of the fundamental idea of an ECS system. There's, there's a lot more sort of uh, techn techn a lot more technical terms around it about why it's a useful thing, and we'll look at some of those too. Uh, but fundamentally, that is the difference. The concept of protocols and extensions is much more versatile than multiple inheritance. <laughs> what am I working on right now? Uh, well, right now I'm working on a project called Space Thing, and we're up to episode 16. So we're quite de deep in, but it doesn't matter. We're just, you know, it's it's totally chaotic. There's no plan, uh, and people just seem to join in and, and have, have questions and make fun of me and all that sort of thing, so it's okay. If you got it right, the flying car can impersonate transport car or a plane, depending on what is needed. Well, yes, I mean, what we don't ever at, at, at any point is define sort of really the flying car object. It is just a thing that exists that has these properties. 
How we treat that thing requires us to use systems, right? and that's the third part of it. So the systems sort of look at this and in turn look at what it's composed of. One of my classic diagrams here where nothing makes any sense anymore. Uh, and it looks at all of this and goes, right, well, I'm a system responsible for updating the flying things. So it will come along and go, well, I need to pick a different colour now, don't I? Well, flying things are things that can transport stuff and can go in the air. That'll be one system. Then we might have another system that says, well, I'm responsible for uh, friction on roads. So I'm looking for things that can carry stuff and have wheels. And, and as you're processing these things, you're sort of running through the memory as fast as you can, and you're picking out just the bits that you need, that, or just the bits that that system needs in order to do its thing. And so you can have quite a, quite a number of different systems that, that seem to do very fine-grained things. So the, the common uh, stuff you see in the literature is you'll have a system that sort of emulates gravity, for example. So uh, everything that's affected by gravity will have a component which is gravity uh, and could be pulled down uh, or up or whatever the direction is. It doesn't matter what else inherits or uses that property of gravity. If it is connected to a gravity component, it is affected by gravity. And so that means I can create systems which are in many ways agnostic to the details. So my system for transporting goods around doesn't care whether it's a car or a plane, it's just got to have this transportation uh, property. My system for controlling things in the air doesn't really care that it's a car on, and has transport, it just has flight properties of some description. So the systems themselves can become very simple. Project without a plan, that's, that's how we do things. Nanowick, hello. Hi Javid, chat. Filthy front end dev here. Composition inheritance are concepts, they have large overlap. You're welcome. <laughs> well, that's what I'm trying to say, I think, on, on the whole, um, is that you know, they, they are there are two ways of achieving the same goal. One, however, is advantageous for our project, and uh, the main difference is the following. Now, let me create a a new page there. So we're going to have, um, and we know that we've got things, for example, a spaceship. So if we went back to OOP, we've got a spaceship as our fundamental class. And then we may have uh, things like fighters, possibly, and we may have things that are transport only, cargo. And we we saw, we saw before, well, there's a problem here. What if we wanted a fighter to also carry some goods? It might have a small inventory. That would immediately give us a problem. Uh, but let's say we wanted to then add more and more things to it. So if I wanted a fighter, we've got different classes of fighters. So we've got an X-10, I don't know, and a Y-23, you know, sexy sort of scientific designations for fighters. And a Z-15, right? They're the best ones, Z-15. Dragon Eye will be all over those. Uh, but I would then need to go into my original program and I have to go and construct these objects. I have to create things that describe what this is, and what this is, and what this is. And I don't necessarily want to do that. I want to be able to sort of describe my uh, objects externally. That way I don't have to go back to the original code. I don't have to recompile anything. I don't need to create this class structure. But I can define all of my objects externally. And we'll, we've talked about that before. We're going to use Lua as some sort of external configuration tool, which would then allow the community to create new types of objects. We just need to come up with the appropriate components to which we can attach to these objects as we're creating them. <laughs> so the X10 is the best, is it? <laughs> the only reason X10 popped into my head is they're actually a really uh, they're a very expensive brand of arrows. I found that in C++ it's hard to implement an ECS properly, especially to make it cache efficient. You're absolutely right, and one of the things I've noticed about a lot of the ECS implementations that are floating around online is they all claim, oh yeah, well, the whole point of an ECS is to be cache efficient, and then go and write code that use unordered maps all over the place, and sort of this weird cross-indexing to try and make things uh, work fundamentally. So I kind of doubt... Uh, some of the evidence behind the cache coherency. But what I will say is that ENT seems to be okay. 
I'm not too bothered about the cache coherency side of things, uh, simply because even if we had a thousand objects, I could do a thousand objects using traditional OOP approaches. I'm just limited then to not being able to modify things without modifying the original source code. Uh, I don't think necessarily that having a vector of, of polymorphic uh, active objects, of you know, objects which are, are inheriting from other classes, is necessarily going to slow down the program. There's going to be other things that slow down the code. Uh, but that said, a lot of people do sort of claim that ECS stuff, when done right, the whole point is that you're just reading a contiguous chunk of memory. And that is kind of the price that you pay for some of this flexibility. Is uh, certainly, I think, in Ent you have mem lots of memory and a bit of memory duplication too. <laughs> Any cargo chads in the chat? <laughs> uh, you're reinventing the protocols. A flying car is not a plane, nor is it a car, but a flying car can implement the protocol transportable drive, so multiple, uh, which never really exists like in reality, while protocols describe much more like a perspective of the object. Yeah, I mean, that's right. Okay, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm, I, sort of, you, you, your comment sort of opened as if, no, no, you're doing this wrong. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the point. It's just a way of describing the situation differently. Can we have a ship designation of AR-53? I presume this is rude or something, isn't it? But why not? I'd never say that I don't do things for the audience. There we go. It's a fighting ship. <laughs> uh, but it's gained a lot of functional and flexible stuff. I don't know. That's obviously some conversation that's already going on. Right, so uh, to that's... We've very briefly talked about ECS. I think I want to do a proper video sort of discussing ECS because one of the things I've also discovered on my journey of doing this periodically is that most of the resources out there are awful. Could I do any better? I think, yes. Could I write a better ECS than the one that I'm using? Probably not. And that's that's a realistic thing that you should be considering when you're start, starting to do these things. You know, Don't always think reinventing the wheel is going to give you the best solution. That's okay, Alex. Hey, Speedy. <laughs> yeah, sorry, we're doing it a Sunday one. So, that is ECS in a nutshell. Now, what does that mean uh, to us programmers? Well, it means everything kind of changes. So, previously, uh, I, 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 will, I will sort of go through the changes I've made to the code now, I think. Because uh, uh, the code is currently using an ECS. Uh, it's using this ent library. Uh, I should probably pop up the ent library, shouldn't I? Um, let me just find that. Just want to make sure we get the right one. That's it. Uh, so that's what I'm using is ent. Uh, it's a reasonably established uh, modern C++ implementation uh, of uh, an ECS system, an Entity Component System system. Uh, it's up to date, it's very easy to use, and I believe there's a certain cube-based game, which obviously crap, uh, that uses it. Maybe I shouldn't be using this then. Um, but it's also got some reasonable documentation, but it, it is it is a little bit not the most beginner friendly, I, I will say that. Um, it's, it's certainly aimed at people that kind of know what they're doing with a lot of this uh, modern C++ stuff. So if you're just sort of you know, getting your feet wet in C++, this is probably not the best way to go about learning it. Uh, there's quite a few strange and interesting things going on. So uh, Ent. Yes, that's uh, what I'm using. It's a, it's a header file include thing. There's no libraries or anything like that, so that's uh, pretty cool. Uh, and it's used by quite a few other things. Uh, so, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, they did have a list of where it's used at some point. Uh, I, I can't find that list. Anyway, they, they have a better website than the GitHub page. Go and check that out. After you make the Ent tutorial video, everybody can use it. <laughs> Possibly. Uh, it's it's quite nice. So we have to we have to look at things a bit differently. That's that's where we're getting to this. So just as a refresher, we used to have uh, a base class called Celestial Body. <coughs> oh, <yeah. coughs> 
Oh, excuse me. Sorry about that. We used to have a base class called Celestial Body. And from Celestial Body, we created a Planet class. I'll zoom in a little bit. Uh, and a Star class. And the star class was responsible for loading its own graphics, and we had a, a draw self function, and it did all the stuff we've done in previous uh, episodes of the series. Planet did pretty much the same. Uh, basically, the planet just loads its resources and draws itself. And in the base class, we had some simple mathematics to get the position in space and handle things like the rotation. We also had a base draw self function, which we're using very early on in the series to draw circles and lines and things all over the place. We then went to uh, create a vector of these celestial body objects and we were using regular polymorphism and inheritance to sort of do all of that for us. Now, that's all gone, I'm afraid. That is now no more. Uh, now, I've sort of taken it upon myself to do a little bit of my own notation for the ECS system, so no doubt that's going to cause controversy, uh, but it's just whilst I'm learning this ENT framework. Uh, in the last episode we did states, uh, that's why we've got state stuff, we're, we're still not doing states today, we're going to look at these changes that I've made over. <laughs> Maybe some water will refresh your vocal cords. Well, I have some purple water today. And we'll be following up this episode with uh, some game decider, which is nice. <laughs> well, the reason I say because people, the whole thing is a system. It's just the system comprises of system objects. Right? So it's a system of systems. So I think the, the suffix of an additional system is required. Right, so the nice thing about ENT, and I know that well, it's kind of in this position of a little bit of influence now, that when I sort of use a new tech and display it on Twitch or in a YouTube video, a lot of people on the Discord server might just go and give it a go. And I recommend that you do, but don't immediately jump on me as a source of information. I'm still learning how this library works. But it is actually quite simple. Uh, so you just create something called a registry, which is ECS in, in my, my project. And this registry is the thing that gives us all of the access to the ENT world. Then I've created a bunch of components. Now I'm not using them all, I just kind of had to think about what are components. Uh, so I've prefixed my components with comp, just to make it really visible that there are components in this ECS system. And my first component is position. What is its Cartesian, Cartesian position in space? It's basically our XY position. Where, where does it get drawn? Uh, Staubfinger, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, Staubfinger Coding Games, good evening. Uh, need a rehydrate button, yes, unfortunately it's a, it's a problem I've got with the, the top of my stomach, it's not necessarily in my throat, uh, unfortunately. Uh, right, we've also then got a component here called Selectable, I'm not using that at the moment. I have another component called Rotator, I'm not using that at the moment, that's going to be responsible for the planets rotating on their axes. Uh, but then here's the one that we were sort of working out for the first three or four videos of the series. It's uh, my orbit primary component. So anything that has this component is expected to orbit something else. And the properties I give it is a, an entity reference to what is it orbiting, how far away is it, what is the angle of the orbit, and how fast should it orbit. So if I give any object in my system this component, it's going to try and orbit something. And one of the nice things about ENT is it doesn't allow you to sort of construct things which don't fully work out. And we might see an example of that later on. Uh, we have a planet one here. So my components may be a bit big. And as you can see, they're, they're, they're not just sort of individual properties. They're not sort of a single uh, uh, basic, basic primitive type of the compiler. They're, they are sort of a, a composition of things in their own right. But they're not necessarily classes. Uh, so something that identifies as a planet, uh, we need some information about what the graphics look like. Now, I might break these out into further components yet, but right now I'm keeping them in one place, because I was trying to uh, transition from the object-oriented way of doing things to this uh, ECS way of doing things. And we know that the planet consisted of a 
a terrain graphic, a cloud graphic, and an atmospheric graphic, and they could be tinted as well. Uh, so I'm storing sort of how do we draw this information, and I really wanted this maybe to maybe this is just what does it look like information. But planets are different to stars. So stars only had uh, the what the base of the star looks like, and it reused the cloud one several times over. Well, you can see there's a duplication of information there, so it may be necessary to sort of pull these things out. So we could have a component which is size um, of the body, possibly. So I, I know we, we, there's a, there's a way of making this a little bit more uh, efficient, I suppose. But I don't want to sort of go down to the really fine grain uh, level where there's so many different components on everything that actually becomes burdensome to work with. There's some convenience to keeping things in a cluster like this. Right, so, what what happens? How does this work? Well, let's go and have a look at the first system that I create. So, I go and say to uh, Ent, well, Ent, I'm creating a new entity. Give me an entity, please. And that entity is called Sun. Uh, it actually works out that it's, uh, it's, it's, not, it's not a particularly complicated object, it's basically just a number. So it represents an index of some description into the, the, the registry that we created for Ent at the start. And then I'm going to go and tell uh, the Ent system that my Sun entity has the following component. And so you do everything, it's a bit, the, the notation is a little bit confusing because you'd like to sort of say sun dot give component or something like that. Uh, it doesn't work quite like that. Oh, got some uh, some bits there. Cactus birth, thank you very much. Still not entirely sure uh, were bits <laughs> of what they do, <laughs> but I appreciate them. It goes ping and uh, it's nice when things go ping. Uh, so what I've done here uh, this is basically, you, you give it the object that you are targeting. So what I'm saying is I want to give my sun component, so I want to give my sun entity this component of being a star. And then the next properties are basically a, a initialize a list of sorts that will populate the rest of this struct. So the radius, the mass, the decal IDs, and the, the tints. So we've got radius, the mass, the decal IDs, and we'll come back to this in a minute. Yeah, there's been a bit of a change there too, uh, and the... Uh, uh, IDs. Oh, got some more pings. <laughs> I think one bit is one penny. Bits give you money. Well, thank you very much. Very kind of you. You have to passively earn bits. Maybe jumping ahead here, but what if an entity has two components with overlapping fields? Uh, for example, two components. Well, that's I think that's part of the design of it, and that's where things get a little bit more complicated. Uh, it's it's not typically accepted that you can have the same component multiple times as part of your entity. And in a way, that does kind of enforce a bit of a design uh, protocol on how you establish your system. And that's really what I've been trying to learn and, and sort of experience too. That the way that it makes you construct your hierarchies uh, does actually make you think about what your hierarchies contain. So it wasn't just I woke up one morning and thought, right, I'm going to create a component for stars, a component for planets. I've actually sort of had several iterations here uh, where I've evolved towards a, a, a setup which I think is right. But as you can see, we, we there are potentially uh, duplicate bits of information. If you've got duplicates, pull that out as another component. Uh, and that way you, you've got just that one component. I mean, if, if it is genuinely duplicated, uh, there's something not quite right with the design. Yeah, so Dandestein just, just said it succinctly there. Thanks, Jared, for the huge font. I can see everything on my 32-inch screen. That's okay. Uh, well, I, I know people, you know, I get comments on YouTube going, Hey, man, why are you using such a large font? How do you cope? Well, it's for your benefit, fool. Uh, right, so once I've created the component for the uh, sun, which tells it I'm a star, uh, I also want to give it a position component. Where does this exist in space? Well, in this instance, it's exactly the same. I'm saying in place the uh, component position onto the sun, uh, and by default, it's going to be 0, 0. So that's why there's no additional parameter there. The position component is just really wrapping um, a vector uh, double 2D type. And then I thought, uh, well, we'll come back to that one in a minute. I want, well, let's create some basic planets. So, uh, do you know what? I'll, I will take that out for the time being, because that was that was just a test for all of the different planets. We'll take that out. 
Earth is done very similarly. Uh, we create an Earth entity. I'm going to give it the component it is a planet, and I'm going to give it the component it is a position, uh, which at the moment is just, I don't need to set it. It can be at zero, zero, that's fine, because I'm also giving it the component that it's got the ability to orbit something else. And I can tell it what it's going to orbit. It's going to orbit the Sun, and I'm going to give it this initial distance away from the Sun, 150, and I'm going to give it an initial angle. So this is a polar coordinate. Our orbit primary component, let's go and have a look at that, is basically a polar coordinate. Uh, R and theta there. So I'm just catching up with some of the text. A lot of them are, are, are big. Yeah, I think there's... Uh, removing duplicate code and putting it into a function is often... A, yeah, absolutely. I, I, I completely agree with you. I have no problems at all with duplicating code. But I do, I do think I have a problem with duplicating fields. Uh, you wouldn't have a situation where you've got an object that has three velocity fields, for example. Uh, if you've ended up in that situation, there's a design flaw somewhere. You, you need to rethink that. Uh, Gusco, hello. Gusco, why are you not got a little sword? Ah, and since last time, I learned how to uh, to VIP people. Somebody somebody pinged me and said, that's how you VIP people. Gusco, there we go. You get a little sword. Uh, ask Griff. I was out for surgery for a bit. Did I? No, we've not missed it just yet. Uh, I think we're about three weeks off, maybe a little bit sooner. Uh, so we're, we're really kind of getting there now. <laughs> Frightening times. Uh, right, I wanted to do... Is it? What is it? Slash VIP. Uh, and who am I going to, to pick? I need to pick somebody that I frequently recognise... I recognise a lot of you, but some of you then go on to have a chat on the Discord server as well. I just want to see if this works. That's what I wanted to make sure, because... It's got a, an underscore at the end. Aposto... Apostolisk. Apostolisk. Right, I have no idea if that's worked, or what it's done, or whether it's compromised my account, or anything like that, but it'll be interesting to see uh, whether they get a little different icon. Ah, yeah, but it's because Speedy's name is, like, massive. I can't, can't remember. People's uh, Twitch names are not the same as their uh, Discord names. And it doesn't pop, uh, conveniently pop up with, <laughs> with the name when you start typing it. Speedy, type something in chat so I can see your name. I'll give you a VIP pass. Uh, Javid, I noticed an anomaly when watching the video with multiple planets. The sun rotates in the opposite direction to the planets, or vice versa. Okay, uh, that's possible. Uh, we haven't really done any sort of like uh, genuine, accurate sort of physics of these things. We just sort of put multipliers on it. We can easily ro change the direction. Um, I don't know ultimately whether I want all of my planets to necessarily orbit the same way round the sun. I know that that's super accurate. But I wonder if there's an interesting gameplay dynamic where things are not necessarily doing that. So we'll keep the option open at the moment. There we go. See, that's the problem, right? Anybody else remember that Speedy had all of these numbers? <laughs> Speedy C. One, two, three, seven. I'm sure this is something mods should be doing. Is that how it works on Twitch? Right, I don't know what it means, though, to be a VIP. <laughs> right. So where were we? We are constructing the solar system. Yes. And so, uh, once I'd created my, uh, this one, Earth, Earth planet, uh, I gave it this orbit component. And here I've got a moon, and I've given the moon an orbit component, which I give to the Earth. So let me just see if this works, well, so we can have a look at a graphic. So we've had a, a bit of talking and a bit of code. You can't VIP people.
I just, like, the whole Twitch sort of community side of things is just a bit rubbish. Right, so now I've took out all of the planets, I've got here Earth and Moon. And what we can see is slowly the Earth. Do you know, let's speed up time a little bit, just so we can see these things a bit better. Uh, right, that's also changed a little bit. We've got a, got a few changes to get through today. Because I've started to tidy up the code too. Uh, is that, uh, let's try that, it might be dead quick. Might not be able to keep up with the planets if they're too fast, you see. Right, so we can see the Earth is orbiting the Sun, and whether you can see it or not, I don't think, yes, I think the, the Moon is very slowly orbiting the Earth. Because they started out uh, genuinely horizontal together, uh, and as you can see, it's slowly, it's going to be very slow there. But if I didn't want the moon to orbit the Earth, let's say the moon just exists, uh, it should just be, this is going off piste a bit here, uh, I should just be able to not apply the component. Right? So if I don't give it that component, I've got a feeling it's going to draw us at zero, zero, because there'll be nothing to update the position. So we'll have to check that. Right, so the moon is no longer orbiting the Earth, but there it is at zero, zero. So simply by giving it that component, I've changed its behavior. And that, I think, is a very powerful tool. I quite like that. The background moves weirdly when you zoom in and out. Uh, yes, it does. That was deliberate um, because I want it to be, when you're at this scale, um, I need it to sort of show that you're, you're making large movements in the solar system. Um, but when you're at this scale, which is perhaps the scale the game's going to be, the movement is very, very subtle. So there's a, it, the, a sort of faux parallax effect going on there. It also depends where you're zooming on. So if I'm, I, you know, I'm not necessarily always zooming uh, dead center. Can you dynamically add and remove components? Uh, yes, you can, uh, but I haven't tried that yet. Uh, I, I, I think there is a, a performance penalty you pay for, for doing that because it needs to sort of internally restructure a considerable amount. Um, so you, you wouldn't necessarily always do that sort of at runtime. But yes, I can dynamically create components, and that's how uh, I'm going to be doing things such as the, developing the models externally. There's no real penalty in the long run. Yeah, that's, that's kind of what I'm, th I'm thinking. That it, I wouldn't sort of want to do it in the tightest of my tight loops, but uh, I, I think you, you do want to be aware of not having them there. I was looking into how Ent is doing things behind the scenes a bit. Uh, maybe you have too, Dan, to see. We've seen all of the different pools that it's constructing. Uh, I, I was curious about how it's doing synchronization across these pools with duplicate data. Um, it's, it's actually very well, it's very, it's very clever and very well written. Right, uh, next thing I want to show, because uh, we've shown these, yes, we've shown the entities, we've shown adding components. I'll tell you what, I'll just put that one back, that moon one back. Uh, this was all the satellite stuff that we did uh, last time. Uh, one of the things I've started to do we've, was, as we were going towards state machines, we started breaking out the code into sort of nuggets, little functions that we can reuse. So one of the things I created was to render the star background, that's now a single function, render the solar system, which is the two uh, overlapping sort of nebula uh, regions and then their position. And here we've got our first system. So this system is responsible for rendering stars. <coughs> so let's have a look at how this works. So the, basically the, the entity, it's gonna go look at all of the entities we've registered in the system, and if that entity identifies as a star, uh, then this function is going to draw it. And we use a bit of ent notation here. So we tell the ECS that we wish to view all of the entities that have a position 
and consider themselves as stars. And this will go and create a container full of these things that only consist, so all of the entities that have these components as part of them. And they will appear in this container. Then we can iterate through this container, uh, in this case taking the entity, the position component, and uh, it's called planet, it probably should be called star in this case, a bit of a cut and paste. And once we've got that information, I can draw it. And I'm using exactly the same drawing routines that we created in the OOP um, implementation. So here I've got uh, the position comes through. Well, that's the position of the star. Probably always going to be zero, 0, but at least we've got that flexibility. We could potentially have other stars in the system. Maybe it's a binary system or something like that. Now that would make the lighting complicated for sure. Um, <laughs> we'll worry about that at some point in the future. Uh, so we need the position component, so we know where to draw things, but we need to know what it looks like. So we need the star component too, awkwardly called planet in this case. And this is just the same, exactly the same code before. So if uh, somebody was complaining that the rotation was going the wrong way around, uh, this is where we could change it by multiplying some things by minus one. Likewise, I have a system that renders everything that identifies as a planet. Now, drawing the planets isn't the same as drawing the stars, so that's why I can't use the same system. Uh, the, the drawing the stars uses additive blending modes, it uses different types of decals, it's, it's on the whole a different approach, it, it, different layers, different calculations. But the, the planets uh, can all be drawn the same way. So if, if the entity identifies as a planet, this is the routine that's going to draw it. Uh, Anwan, hello! Zobiris, hello. Didn't know C++ can do that kind of parameter assigning. It's a, it's a 17 feature, I think. I can't remember what it's called. Yeah, that's, that's, I think Dandestein, yeah, again, you're, you're right. It, it's not sort of ubiquitous. It, it, there are a few things like that I've seen now in, in modern C where you can do this sort of obscure... Um, initialization but it's only in certain places so anyway yes that has packed that so that has un unpacked these components from the object that's in this set of all of the entities that have these two components to begin with oh, that's a mouthful isn't it the video is going to be a fun one to make uh, so then I have, uh, I'm going to have a system for rendering the small bodies, not got that far yet. System update orbital positions. So if anything has a component, which is orbit, so anything that has a position but can orbit something else, exactly, I do exactly the same thing. I get the position it's currently at, I get the component which contains its orbit information, and I update the orbit information because that's basically a polar coordinate, so I'm updating the theta component. Uh, based on the distance there and the amount of elapsed time and we also want to include the rotational velocity as well which uh, at the moment is just a, a constant but it could be it's there it's part of the component and then I update the position uh, of the entity that we're currently looking at now the interesting thing with orbiting uh, is it needs to know what it's orbiting around so here I'm requesting from the entity component system to get me the position component of the primary object, the thing that this object is orbiting around. Now, once I've got that position, I then know uh, where it is in Cartesian space. Now, there's a little bit of a, a snag here, it's something I've not yet experienced, but I've got a feeling will come back to bite me in the future. Uh, one of the things I don't necessarily have control of is the order of any of these things, um, unlike I would in the hierarchy. So it's very possible that for in between frames, um, things are going to update themselves in, in a rather strange order. So let's say I'm the moon, uh, to get my Cartesian position I need to look at my polar position relative to the Earth, and my Earth is going to get it relative to the Sun. But that kind of implies that the Earth has had its position updated before I update the moon's position. So I think we do need to think about some way of sorting that information, or is anybody going to notice because it's only going to be incorrect for one frame? Don't know. May come back to haunt us, we'll need to have a look at that. Would it be more efficient if you switched comp position and comp whatever, since more stuff probably has a position than, for example, a star? Or does that not matter? 
I don't think it matters so much because basically this is this is going how this view function works is a bit of C++ black magic there's all sorts going on behind the scenes uh, because there's all of these different components are created in their own memory pools there's all sorts of linkages going on I really don't know I can't I can't make an assumption that changing the order of these components in the template uh, changes the efficiency of that function's behavior I really can't can't tell you that Uh, well, you, 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 it's not a case of find things that have a position, and out of all of those things that have a position, find a thing that have the uh, the orbit. Uh, um, yes, that's the result that we want, but I've no idea how that's actually implemented by Ent. Uh, so I, I wouldn't go as far to assume that that's basically what it's doing. It's searching for everything with a position, and then searching through everything. I think there's, there'll be more interesting hashing going on. There'll be all sorts of things. So yeah, don't know. Uh, Twister. Diego, hello. Right, so that's another system I've got there. Right, now, so, well, well yes, okay, we're up to the, the fun bit now. Our on-user update has now become a lot tidier, much, much simpler. So this is the state machines we were looking at last time. We're not changing states just at the moment. But I've basically simplified very, very much. Uh, I update all of the orbital positions of every entity in my system that can orbit something else. And then I choose to render, start building and compositing the scene. So I render my uh, nebulous backgrounds. I then render the star, call my system to render the stars. And then I call the system that renders the planets. And that's it. It's as simple as that. Uh, we're starting to sort of encapsulate the code a little bit. So in, in, in short, one of the things I've discovered is that now I've got these very sort of fundamental components up and running. Adding new stuff has become... A little bit simpler. The code, in a way, does start to build itself. Um, but I do find that as I as I progress it a bit, I always need to go back and change some of my initial uh, assumptions about how the system is constructed. And that's probably just due to a bit of naivety about how to design these systems. Uh, but it's also, um, I, I think, it it means as this is a project without a plan. As somebody mentioned before, uh, that we because we don't necessarily have a plan, we don't necessarily know what components to give things. So uh, it's all a bit of a, a learning exercise. Now I will before we finish the uh, the session. Uh, one of the other things that I've added is an asset pool, and I thought you know why not? Let's let's go. Let's do something horribly horribly modern for the asset pool. Uh, one of the things that we started working with is the graphics. And uh, let's have a look at the satellite stuff because we we started doing this here, uh, where we'd create a vector of renderables which uh, contain the texture information, and we were creating a, a blank renderable and then loading it with this image, and this of course gives us an index, and we're using that index uh, to tell the object what graphics should it use. So in theory, we've got a vector full of graphics, and we're indexing into that vector as and when the objects need to draw themselves. Um, one of the things is if we start to externalize this is we need a way to stop duplication. So if the same asset has already been loaded, we don't want to load it twice. Uh, and we, we want to be able to load different types of assets too. Uh, so I created a, a simple class. So I say simple. Um, it ended up being a little bit more complicated than I thought it was going to be. Something you don't often see uh, sort of on on any of the OLC stuff is templates, and that's because I, I often feel that they're, they're not entirely the right tool to use in most cases, but in this case I felt it was. So I have a, uh, started off, I'll tell you the story, I started off with a base class called an asset pool. Uh, and this, the idea was you would template, uh, so you'd inherit from this base class, uh, say I want a pool of renderables, or I want a pool of sound effects, or a pool of whatever, different pools for different types of resources. <coughs> PG, yes, it does. It does have a template. Yes, a very, very simple one. <laughs> uh, so then I thought, well, I, you know, we're, we're, on the whole, we're not trying to avoid OOP, but we're not using OOP. And I ended up writing this thing, and I, I must have been half asleep at the time. It does work. It works very well. Uh, but as you can see, we've got uh, parameter-packed templates. We've got template specialized functions that throw exceptions, which is also something else that we don't normally do. <laughs> Uh, and because you can't do uh, uh, polymorphism, you can't create virtual template functions, um, I created this this monstrosity here, uh, which allows you to construct objects specifically with a template specialization um, for loading a renderable. 
<laughs> I don't know whether people are going to enjoy this one or not. I just sort of casually threw this together. Right? So there wasn't as much thought that went into this as I was hoping. Uh, but the idea being now that uh, because a renderable... <laughs> I've probably lost half the audience now in this one. Uh, because a, a, a renderable um, needs a specific way of loading it, and I don't have a way of getting that information into this base class, but because if, if, if I inherited from it, I could explicitly have things that are there for renderables. But I kind of didn't want to do that. I just wanted to try something a bit different. Uh, and so all of the assets in the asset pool, so the common interface, uh, the assets are given a name. So if we go to the low add function, here we go. So all of the assets in the asset pool are given a name, which also happens to be the file path in this instance, because that's a convenient name to give things. It's going to be unique. Uh, there's the OLC resource pack stuff. Don't worry about that if you've never seen that before. That's there in Pixel Game Engine. Basically, you can load images from a virtual file system or your regular file system. And then I pass in this uh, parameter pack of arguments, which if you're loading a renderable, you've got things like should it be filtered, which we use in, in the spacing, or should it be clamped to the edges? And I think there might be something else too. Uh, for sound effects, it might be a bit different. Some, a different set of construction arguments required. I then use a map and a vector to sort of change the uh, name into an index in that vector. So we firstly check, does, does, this, uh, does this asset already exist in this pool? Uh, if it does, then I'm just going to return the index of its location. That's fine. Um, then if it does, doesn't exist, uh, we're going to create it. And this is where it gets fun. So we've got our template type here. Uh, which is the object. In this case, it's a renderable. Uh, and then we call the onAd function. We pass in the renderable. So this is passed by reference. Uh, and then we give it the name, the RPAC. So these, these are the parameters that are always given there. And this additional set of construction parameters at the end. Go down to our magic function. OnAd here. OnAd isn't implemented by this class. Uh, it just it doesn't have anything. It's got to be implemented uh, with a template specialism like this. So the on add uh, is specific for uh, OLC renderable. You can see it brings in the arguments and then goes and loads the renderable. It uses the, this is this is the load function of OLC renderable, which takes in the file name, the pack, and then the arguments. And if that is okay, this function returns true. And if it returns true, it's added to the asset pool. So we've avoided duplication, and we can use this for multiple things. <laughs> Sorry about that, D Crew Games. Right. So yes, I knew. I knew. As soon as you mentioned the word exceptions, you've got sort of a, an interesting set of debates and, and arguments to go on. Um, I don't worry about it too much, simply because you can you can always sort of pre-cache things so if, if you know that once you've loaded things successfully all i need to then have is an index I, I just need to store a number and we will be doing that that's what this decal id was once you've got to that number pending that your system hasn't collapsed or that your asset pool is is clever and starts rejecting assets sort of at runtime that sort of thing that number is never going to change uh, but i did want to just sort of experiment with the exception so the nice part is it's, it's not really about the runtime behavior, it's the debugging behavior, which I quite like. So when you're debugging your project, you've got it all structured and set up. Um, if there's a failure, uh, it actually, the, the, deep, the Visual Studio environment likes exceptions. It can work it out. It can sort of tell you what it was. It can provide you with the message that you're providing. Uh, and it, it sort of gets you to the point where the, the error actually happened uh, quite easily. So yes, there we go, a horrible mess of quite a few different techniques going on, uh, but just wanted to sort of get that out there, that people often, because I never never show sort of template stuff, people assume that I don't know what I'm doing with it, um, but <laughs> maybe I don't, maybe that's why it looks like this, but you know, there's, there's, there's some thought that's gone into this. Uh, so I'm using this asset pool now as a way of loading the graphics uh, into the uh, system. So that's why you're seeing here, um, when I'm loading planets, uh, so for this, let's let's go. Let's bring in our thousand planets again. So when I'm loading the planets, I can simply go to my graphics pool. I can say add, pass it the file name, give it some parameters of how they should be loaded, and it doesn't matter that even though I'm doing this a thousand times, 
the pool itself is handling the duplication. So it, that never happens, right? We, we load the graphic once. Uh, and it, this is, is smart enough now to return the ID of that particular graphic. If it doesn't exist, an exception is thrown. Because I don't handle the exception anyway, I want it to sort of stop the program. This is quite useful because later on, as with all of these things, as we're doing with the satellites, as with everything, you can see we're starting to build up these sort of modules of initialization. These are all great candidates to be externalized. So we'll be able to pull all of this out of the C++ program. So we've got the planet surface being loaded there. The same planet surface image is being used here, but it's okay. The pool is smart. It'll 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 know and not provide that duplication. That's uh, not yet been implemented in the satellite view. Um, satellite stuff I've not touched since the episode we did about the satellite placement. Uh, that will be the next sort of phase. Will be to sort of integrate all of this now into the same asset pool. The nice thing about having a pool like this is I could have a different pool for the satellite components, a different pool for the planet stuff, and potentially treat those differently if I needed to. Ah, Terry, good evening. So I'm just I'm glancing through all the chats. I'm glad to see that exceptions are sort of a hot button issue, aren't they? Yeah, I think Christoph is right. There's, there's there, there is something about exceptions which you kind of think, oh, it's just a whacking great big break. It's a massive interrupt in in the program. Um. <sighs> Yeah, but I can't, I, in my my mind, that's exactly what I want it to be. <laughs> it's in in principle. I'm going to shoot myself in the foot here, aren't I? But let's see what happens if uh, it does. We may as well test the theory. So it compiles nicely at the moment. So it should be able to draw a uh, thousand planets. Just double check. Oh yeah, we sped up time, didn't we? So <laughs> there they are. They're all whizzing around. <laughs> So there's our thousand planets. Fine, right? So if I close that down and we damage one of these files, watch it not work. Ah, good. Exception handled. File does not exist. It's took me to it. If I go to my call stack, I can go to on user create. So there we go, right? So you know that's that's how it should work. And in a way, it kind of you know it worked as as expected. It also comes up in the output as well. Um, invalid argument at memory location. Yeah, I don't really know what the invalid argument is, but I, you know that I I think that's quite a nice feature. <coughs> yeah, Terry, it's uh, it's definitely progressed a little bit. Shivix, hello. Yeah, we get to we get to one of those old fuddy duddies though now that would be just basically programming everything in hex if he could. So there we go. Uh, that's the major set of changes. Best put that back, haven't I? Uh, we've introduced ent as an entity component system system, uh, and we've added a graphics pool. So it's a fairly busy day yesterday that I spent on this, and I, that's what we'll do this episode as a bit of a catch up episode. Uh, but we're now in a position where we can actually start adding feature. Uh, and and that's that's where I wanted to get to. It was getting a little bit unwieldy. So I imagine on Tuesday when we do the next episode, uh, you'll see far fewer files here, uh, but the files will look look a bit different too. Because uh, I'm going to break all of my systems out into different files. Uh, basically, that class hierarchy collapses. It's going to become multiple source files, all inheriting from the same header file, I think, or all including the uh, header file. Your bubble is too small. Oh, so <laughs> uh, will there be a variable for gravity or mass to figure out orbit distance? Um, we did talk about that in one of the earlier episodes. So there, there was originally, uh, yeah, mass was calculated based on the volume. It assumed a uniform density for the planet, and from that we derived a, a, a sort of a an angular velocity, and I believe we discussed with Ericsson about distance. The, the trouble became realistic systems aren't fun. 
Have you thought about backporting CGE to C? Uh, not console game engine, but pixel game engine already has been ported to C by our very own Morris. Uh, Morris1138 has uh, created a C version. Oh, what did I want to show? I wanted to show something. Uh, right, yes. Hopefully, Twitch doesn't censor my own links. Uh, if you did want to sort of play around with space thing, I'll be creating a periodic uh, sort of interactive demo version here. Um, so this is, as you know now, Pixel Game Engine stuff can run in the browser. Uh, he says optimistically, it takes a little bit of time to load. But I think I've confused it now. Anyway, click on that. That should, uh, yeah, why is that not loading? It should be loading. Probably because everybody's just clicked on that simultaneously, haven't they? There we go. My server's a bit slow. Uh, so this is... Uh, so the browser-based version of Space Thing. Uh, the link went up a, a little while ago. It's it's about at the moment it stands at about 40 meg to download. So that's why there's a, a bit of a stall though. It just doesn't usually take that long. But I suspect the streaming is, has had an effect with that. Can you at some point talk about how to organize a huge main class? I've used Pragma Regions, but Visual Studio is a dumb dumb and suddenly keeps opening all of them, and it's a nightmare. Uh, well, the latest Pixel Game Engine uses Pragma Regions. I think the the, the trick is, in reality, if you want to work with a big file, is break the file up. Separate files. Uh, you can always use a tool to bind files together at some point, which is one of the ways I now sort of start to work with developing my tools. Uh, so yeah, you can go and play with whatever the latest iteration of Space Thing is by clicking on that link. I, I really like this inscriptor thing, and again, uh, big thanks to the community members that sort of made that come together. So, uh, we should have. Did we? Oh, we had an exception, didn't we? That's what we we stopped there. So we've not really added any new code tonight specifically, but lots of things to get through. We've, we've looked at the entity component system system. We've looked at the pools. Uh, we've looked at how things uh, change. I, I'm, I'd be interested to try and get some of these things to orbit other things other than the sun. Uh, how can I go about doing that? So I could have one massive system where every other planet basically orbits every other planet. Uh, maybe. So these are the things I don't know about Ent yet. I'm still, still sort of learning these things. Uh, I want to, in my components, when I'm creating my thousand planets, they're currently all orbiting uh, the sun. But it might be more interesting to orbit other planets at random. I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to choose or cache uh, the planets as we're developing them. I mean, I could hack something together to make that make that happen. Uh, so I could have a standard vector, uh, and it's going to consist of whatever this is. The uh, type is ent entity. V hack. We'll call that V hack for now. And as I add uh, the entities, as I add a thousand of them, uh, I'm going to also just store that entity, vhack.pushback uh, planet. Oh, pushback planet. Uh, and now I want to choose one of those at random as being the location that it's orbiting around. So if I pick uh, v hack uh, rand mod v hack dot size, the no idea. I'm totally, we're totally making this up as we go along now. Uh, and the numbers I'm giving it, I probably don't want uh, everything to be a thousand anymore. No idea. Let's just see what happens. So. We're picking a random planet based on how many have been added in. Yes, that's it. I have. I already have an orbital component. <laughs> what is the end goal for this program? <laughs> well, if if we knew, uh, <laughs> it wouldn't be much of a series. At the moment, I think it's going to be like a Sim City in space. Uh, is is where we're going with it. 
Right, I have no idea what this is going to do. Let's see, it'll be a horrible set of memory leaks. Who knows? Uh, what will the first planet do? Yeah, interesting. Now, have I got something like a thousand planets all on top of each other there? Setting the planets, we're hacking the... So we're choosing one of the existing planets randomly. <laughs> the goal was a full simulation of reality. <laughs> You know, it's, it's more like a, an anno in space uh, kind of thing with a bit of simplicity. It's going to be like a, a logistics and build them up sort of game, I think. Initialize the vector with the sun before iterating over a thousand planets. Ah, I see what you're saying. You think it might be the. That's why I was a bit concerned that the very first planet that gets added. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Good call. Uh. Give it something to uh, to look at. Well, certainly something happening. It does kind of look like everything's just orbiting a central point, though. Oh, not quite. Right? No, not quite. Because I mean, this one's clearly doing its own thing. As is this one. I guess the the on the whole, the average is to sort of orbit around the center of mass. Maybe we, we want some different speeds, don't we? So let's go and implement that. Let's implement the orbital speed. Uh, so we've got this rotational velocity component here, which is part of our uh, orbit component. If we go down to our update the system for orbital components, uh, which was here. Uh, got in, yeah, that was some sort of hacked number that we chose last time. Uh, I'm going to throw in here the actual speed that we want to throw things. So that's our orbital velocity, and that's coming from our orbit component. We just need to initialize that then. Might initialize that's something random. Uh, orbital components. So what value was that? So this is in our orbital component. This is the fourth property. Let's start here. There's our thousand planets. Random double, random double. Okay, and um, we're going to pick a speed. So we're just picking numbers out now to see if anything makes any difference. Uh, we want that to at least be... 0.01 and I'm going to pick potentially 1. Right? Probably far too fast. Uh, and we'll just take that and try that down here too. Oh, I'm going to leave Earth where it is. Yeah, Earth and Moon, they, they don't count, but just our thousand planets. There we go. <laughs> Fascinating stuff. It's like a whole there's a whole cluster of objects that must have been unlucky enough to sort of get centralized on something else. Uh, so let's just slow down time a little bit, and we can we can see what that's doing. Uh, yeah, so this is why I need to get away from one big file here. I'm going to slow that down by a factor of 10. <laughs> there we go. So yeah, things are 
rather chaotically orbiting other things. We can't sort of determine that relationship very easily uh, because the distances that things can orbit are, are not very uh, not very tight. And this is silly, of course, but it's really just a way of testing this entity component system system uh, to see if it works, and it does. So, so all we've done there is change the orbital nature of the objects, and they all now sort of have that pattern. And that's what we would have expected from a, an object-oriented implementation as well, right? So if they had an update, they would all fundamentally execute the same code. What is comp position? Uh, comp position is the uh, X Y position, Cartesian space uh, component. Now for collision detection. Well, that will be in the next episode. <laughs> Rather unusually today, so, so I'm going to sort of end this episode of the Code Zone today. But I've got another bit of time for some streaming, uh, and one of the things that I want to do uh, is. Uh, I'm going to go on, move on to something called Game Decider. Now, probably a lot of the audience here now, uh, which well, there's quite a few of you, um, probably have no idea what Game Decider is. Um, but it's something a little bit of fun uh, that we do with uh, some of the members of the channel. <laughs> Thank you, Zano. That's very kind of you. <laughs> <coughs> Right, so there we go. Uh, yeah, Peter there saying Game Decider is the best thing. Well, it depends <laughs> it depends on your perspective. Uh, but Game Decider is a little utility that I wrote. Uh, it's written in the Pixel Game Engine, uh, and it allows the Twitch audience to interact with a, uh, a system which will then choose games that I have to play for a certain amount of time. Uh, and the ch uh, platform of choice is the NES, the Nintendo Entertainment System. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of fun. It can be very silly. Uh, so I'm going to move over to game decider mode now. Uh, so it'll take me a minute to uh, to set up. But yes, there we go. Entity components and acid pools. That's what we've talked about today. And we've gone 15 minutes over already. It'll be a long episode uh, on the, the YouTube. Uh, right, so I need to enable uh, game decider mode. So I'll take a, a second, won't it? Uh, game decider. Hello, there we go. Game decider. Uh, right. No problem, Dragon Eye. <laughs> so I do encourage you all to stick around for Game Decide, at least for the first 10 minutes of it, see what it's all about. Uh, and I'm going to, uh, to start the uh, Game Decider as well. Uh, that's the important, important thing, uh, which is up here. And now I need to update the OBS because we get this sort of stuff. Uh, which I want that one. There we go. <laughs> right. Apostolisk, thank, thank you. Uh, right, Game Decider. So what is Game Decider all about? Uh, I just need to get my controller and thing set up. Uh, doesn't quite work like that. So there's going to be on the screen at any time uh, three randomly chosen games for you guys to choose from. And you vote for the one that you want um, by uh, picking the, the number or you can subject me to two more minutes of it. <laughs> and it could be awful. <coughs> Uh, so, and what will happen is, as soon as the timer runs out, it will automatically change the game for me. I have no control over it. <laughs> so I'm going to start playing. Uh, this is Megaman. Hopefully you'll be able to hear the game audio. Now everybody knows, I'll, I'll turn this up a little bit. Um, it won't be too loud because it will start to interfere with the stream when I upload it. <laughs> of course all the chat suddenly gets spammed with full of votes. I think, oh, quite a lot of votes. And I need to make sure I can see the clock as well. Right. <coughs> I think we're all set up. We're ready to go. Uh, I have no idea which is the best world to start with. <coughs> <coughs> I can't. I, you know, I'm, I'm going to be careful what I say here because I'm not a big Mega Man fan. It's too hard. <laughs>
Of course, whilst I'm gaming, I'm chatting less, but I will occasionally glance at the chat. It's all just for fun, by the way, so don't take it all too seriously. Ah, oh, these things. Why can't Mega Man shoot upwards? Oh. Pinball Quest, okay. We're doing Pinball Quest. <laughs> Poppy, poppy, oh no, exclamation marks. Viva Golf, circus mode, RPG mode. <laughs> <coughs> well, we'll start with uh, poppy, poppy, one player. Right, so that's one of the buttons, that's the other. Oh, that's also that one, right. Let's go. Now, we used to do Game Decider fairly frequently, but I, I haven't done many sort of gaming streams for a while. Mainly because we started to do gaming on Discord instead. 16 votes for this. <laughs> uh, but the For those that are interested, the... Twitch code that I'm using, we actually developed on stream. Uh, it's an it's a pegex actually for the Pixel Game Engine. Oh, I've hit hit a bomb or something. I don't know if that's that good, bad. What's going on? I've no idea what's happening here. What is that all about? So uh, there is a pegex which allows you to do sort of Twitch bot stuff. Uh, but I just need to, before I, I will release it, uh, but I think I just need to double check that it's still accurate. It's one of the reasons I'm doing this stream tonight, uh, just to make sure that the Twitch bot stuff is still uh, working and valid. It appears to be. It also, at the moment, only works on Windows. Now, I could make a call to, uh, to implement it in ASIO, um, but, oh dear, uh, but I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, we've thought about doing. Um, yeah, I'm playing with a controller. We've thought about doing uh, changes, uh, state state saves between games. Uh, there will be some games if we get them today. I am just going to skip because most of the time it's like things like Nabunga's Ambition, that sort of thing. Uh, there's literally, you know, we'll we'll never get anywhere, and it's not that fun for anybody. I feel like the ball mechanics in this are awful. It's like they're not at all realistic. <laughs> uh, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing here. Is that good? Oh, it's like billiards, except rubbish. This is awful. Why is there, there's a lady sort of leapfrogging a jukebox on the American flag? <laughs> America! Let's try going off. See, I think that's exactly where they all ended up last time. Oh no, it wasn't. I chose exactly that location and it was a different response this time. So it was some randomness going on. Yeah, I don't rate this. Oh, right, we're changing over. Uh, Amagon. Amagon. Ah, I need to make it so it updates the focus. Okay. All right, what is this? I don't think we've played this one before. Oh, wow, look at this. This guy's cool. Oh, I've got limited ammo. Don't waste it all. Oh, okay. All right, what's going on? Big mushroom thing. Oh, shooting thing. Wow, it's really fast. Absolutely going to use up all my ammo here. I 
I was never a fan of sort of realistic textures on the NES. I always thought they look messy. Uh, so things like the bushes and stuff, they, they look sort of bitty and, and granular. Anybody, I've, I've never seen or heard of this. Oh, wow, so it's one hit death. Right. Try again. Wow, okay. Unforgiving. Right. <laughs> oh, what? What? That's it. Get out of the way. <laughs> okay, this, this game's just outright lazy. Lazy, lazy dev, this game. <laughs> I can't believe it. I can't believe I've never heard of this one before. <laughs> oh, okay. We're now on Thriller's Safari. <laughs> Wazula, to restore your immortal powers, I command you to bring Barbie Bikini to me. <laughs> Barbie Bikini, right, fill a chart of... Oh, no, no, okay. Right. Okay. Whoa. Okay, right. So at least we now we know what the game is. Just sort of throwing us straight in there, isn't it? This is awful. Who developed this one? <laughs> game over, dude. Let's try that again. Right. Well, it's got the uh, dual. Uh, oh, the controls are awful. I was just because um, I'm I'm looking at sort of how the game works as well. It's got the uh, really crude implementation of dual dual direction scrolling. I'm going to slow him down a bit here. Oh, can't go that slow. What game collection is this? <laughs> this is like, can I hit the turtle or not? Right, that's what I need to learn. Can I hit... Oh. Game over, dude. I think we'll be seeing that screen a lot. This is awful. People, people, you know, generally think I'll be bad at games. I'm not that bad. Ah, you can hit the turtle. Okay. Right, okay. Oh, here we go. We're going now. And there's a jump button, so that, that helps a bit. Not much. You've got absolutely no way of recovering. What? <laughs> this has to be LGN rubbish. Awful. Awful game. And there's too much going on again on the screen, right? The graphics are sort of, yeah, that spray paint nonsense. Can't work out what's, uh, what's happening. But the colour selection's pretty good. See, I hit the turtle that time. Why does he keep going? I mean, there's no benefit to it. Thriller's Surfari. He's not even surfing. I don't know what the... Oh, what, do, what does the red thing do? <laughs> Why am I collecting that? What What are the two green dots next to me? Right. Ah, I can do tricks. It is, it's LJN. Okay, I thought I'd seen it somewhere. <laughs> what, two more minutes of this? Are you are you guys insane? Is this really what you want? Oh, 
Yeah, Alex, you need to play this one and get good at it. <laughs> I hit the turtle. This is awful. I hit the turtle. I hit the, the damn turtle. <laughs> in my more relaxed position here. <laughs> There's obviously a gameplay dynamic I don't fully understand that uh, I, I'm missing. It's, it's actually using... Oh, 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 not good. Okay, so you can go backwards. Maybe you've just got to yeah, we've got to really, really carefully navigate the obstacles. I don't know what I hit there. I'm sure I hit the turtle. Game over, dude. This is. I reckon nobody's ever got past the first level on this. Right, I'm going to take it really carefully and slow. Do you reckon we're on a time? If I go too slowly, I can't make it over the pits. Ugh. I wonder if there's a speedrun community. Oh, there's definitely going to be a speedrun community for it, but it's just awful. Hey, I'm, I'm, at least we're picking... I must have changed the random number generator. At least we're seeing a different set of games. Oh, hang on. We're changing Uncharted Waters. Now, this is a, this is a famous one, this, isn't it? <coughs> oh, this is going to be... Oh, this is some simulation game, is it? I thought... Oh, dear. New adventure. So these are the ones we may. I may have to add a vote to skip option. Yes. <laughs> sure. Why not? Please assign bonus points. Charisma. Strength. The music's awful. <laughs> so this whole tool was uh, <laughs> enter the name of the flagship uh, the reason this tool exists is because I couldn't decide what game to play one day and thought I'd let the, uh, the community sort of sort it out for us the music is really low well my concern is that later on if I upload this it'll turn it into uh, the ads it'll get ads slapped on it no, I've turned it up a bit is this okay yes Yes. Okay. I am JX9. My oh, I can't even make it go faster. Oh. Oh, you can, but they just it just skips the text. <laughs> ah, Christiana, our fur princess. Her beauty takes my. Oh. <laughs> One year... Oh, come on. We're two, Captain. Oh, nope. We've had enough of that. We're on uh, Rad Racer. The community decided that was enough. Of, uh, oh, it's square. Okay. A 3 to 8 twin turbo. <coughs> okay. These games always impressed me on the on the NES, and even more so once I'd made my NES emulator and realised just how difficult implementing this sort of thing is. Oh, wow. Okay, right. So we've got uh, 
proper car explosion physics going on. So I do need to brake. Braking is important. It'd be nice if there was a, a mini map or something to pop up to tell me which way the track's going to move. I'm guessing we ran out of time. That was a, that was a so okay. Oh no, we did. We just made it just for the Oh, that's nice. It gives you like a grace period. It's not a lot of scenery going on in this, is there? I quite like the hills. I'd be interested in doing a hill algorithm in this style. Oh, come on, get back on the track. I know I did the retro racing game, but that was very much a mathematical hack more than anything else. It'd be interesting to do uh, hills in pseudo 3D. Remember, we did actually try doing something like that with uh, the um, uh, pseudo 3D planes. Uh, there was a few demo videos going around where that was given hills and all sorts of interesting effects kicking out. Right, so the edge of the track. I've learned that the edge of the track is far more deadly than the other cars on the track. So the trick is stay on the track. Oh. I think that's it this time. Now, interesting, I don't know if you can see on the stream, but there's uh, some scrolling uh, glitches where the CPU is catching up with the V-Sync of the uh, PPU. Once, once you've made a NES emulator, you've ruined the uh, you've ruined the NES. <laughs> is this anything like Mode 7? No, no, not on the NES, no. Ah, okay, so that's that's the risk. Hitting other cars is really just there to hit you off the track, and it's the obstacles at the side of the track <laughs> which are the bigger problem. So you can see on the right-hand side where the beach is touching the sky, it's sort of a, it's a horizontal line that's always a bit wrong. It's require sort of full attention. It's a, uh, it's not bad. I think it's the whole game is really it's just going to be this, isn't it? Might be interesting to try it with one of the other cars. Oh, so yeah, you got no sort of indication what's coming up. Just kind of catches you out there. Well, I think the, the cars themselves, except for the main car, the other cars are definitely going to be sprites. So I think you'll only get so many of those uh, on a single scan line. I think the main car in the middle, if it was me, I would be sticking that in the name table. Oh, I think we're out of time again. Yeah, so when you get out of time, it just stops accelerating. It doesn't allow any more acceleration. So we didn't quite make it to the end. I'd quite like to play the other car now. Oh, yet do subscribe to Prime. Thank you very much. Uh, how can I? Uh, uh, I don't think I can reset. I think that's it. You, you choose the car, and that's it. There's literally no uh, no option. The music's nice, isn't it? For a square game, this is pretty weak. I feel this is this is more of a square tech demo. Oh, there are kind of road signs implying where the bend is, but they're so fast. It doesn't tell you where the subtle bends are. If 
focusing mode. Focus mode. Can't see the chats on a game like this, though. Oh, come on. Can I change the music? Uh, not easily. Yeah, that's that's what I was thinking. The signs do exist for sharp bends. Whoa! You just appeared out of nowhere, man. What? So you, you generally can't have one crash. One crash is enough to sort of ruin it. That's appalling. Well, we're very close. Oh. Wow. That's what the select button does. Oh, has that turned it into... Oh! That's turning it into... Uh, stereoglyphic, isn't it? If you had the 3D glasses. Wow, I didn't know the nurse could do that. Interesting. I mean, that must have been awful to play, because it's literally rendering one frame, then the other, and relying on sort of your... your retinographic memory to... to sort of <laughs> blur it all together. Wow! That's fascinating. That's why there's nothing else going on on the screen. The entire game is just processing that. Oh, I'm very tempted to go and get a pair of uh, red and green glasses from somewhere and give that a go. <laughs> Had no idea that's what it was like. Okay. <laughs> yeah, the voting system, uh, you can still change things uh, even right up to the death. Uh, that was out of a bit of trial and error when we were trying. People were on such different lags and things, it was difficult to make it confirm. Oh, dear. Oh. Oh. Why? Limpur. I bet nobody bought this. Nobody went out of their way to choose to play this. Our homeland is in a crisis. You must... Uh, whatever. Lumpur. <laughs> Select a scenario. Napoleon's beginning. <laughs> we can either play the game ourselves or watch the computer play. Oh, yeah. Which one should we pick? <laughs> View wars in other cities. Oh, everything all right. No idea. Play game. Right, okay. This is very strange that literally left and right mean yes and no. <laughs> so, left for yes, right for no. It's good game. Oh, God. It's good game design, that, isn't it? Can you win? I've no idea. I can't do anything yet. Right? The Turkey's plotting a strategy. Now Russia's plotting a strategy. Russia stopped trade with Austria. Yeah, Italy's looking a bit, a bit bent there. Do I get an option soon to do something? Right. Naples and France. Naples declared war on Spain. The original swipe right. <laughs> Oh dear, oh no, what a shame. We're now having to play Castle of Dragon. <laughs> well, that's a dragon and it's a castle. Oh, the dragon's stolen something. What's it taken? It's took the princess. Oh, it's looking a bit ghouls and ghostsy. The Wen Wenlery Castle. Oh wow, skeleton! Oh, the skeletons look cool. Okay, this is going to be hard as nails, isn't it? This is going to be almost impossible to play. 
Yeah, so everything's at an awkward height where I can't interact with anything at all. This is abysmal. Oh, <laughs> Ooh, I've got some sort of special attack. What are the other buttons? So select, pauses, of course. Start does nothing. The screen flashes. I guess that's meant to be lightning, is it? I can jump. Oh, it's the white knight. Wow. Am I am I winning? <laughs> I'm guessing that was good. <laughs> oh. Okay. Is that Mumra? Oh, we're outside now. Ah, okay, so that was like a... Wow, this guy's hard. Run away! What? I blame Gorbit. Game over. Don't take me back to the start. Give me some sort of... Oh, castle of Dragons. I've no idea if that was a boss. Right, okay. Well, we've got some game dynamics, at least. We, we kind of understand. If I go that way, can't go that way. So I think the blue bar... I don't know. The blue bar represents some sort of energy... Wasn't this thing? This was the thing that killed me last time. Oh, now I've got a different. Oh, got a different weapon. Can't do anything about these. Defend against them. Oh, it's this guy. So you sort of hit him, and he disappears and goes off screen. You just stab him in the knees. You think his friends would sort of say, well, you know, look at that guy just being stabbed in the knees. Maybe we should try some different strategy. Ah, get, I'm supposed to stab the furry. Right, so we're at Mumra again. I think there was something strange about the collision box for Mumra, which meant caused me problems last time. Right, so I've got a second suit of armour. No, you see, that's the point, right? The point is that the, the games, you, you, you have to try all the games, or else people will just be randomly picking the same one each time. So if you want to get rid of Family Feud, vote for it. <laughs> it's a lot more psychology goes, right, we know that this thing's a pain, right? Run away! Oh, ah, oh, on to Dirty. Now, if this is a light gun game, we'll have to skip it. Um, I've not got the light gun set up. Dirty Harry, right? We're waiting. Okay. Who is it made by? No, Nintendo by America. Created by Chris Gray. Start game or password? Oh, off. Right, we're off again. We're going. Wow, okay. So there's. Uh, I've got a punch. Okay, I've not got jump. That's what I was going wrong. It would help if the enemies just weren't always on top of me here. Okay. Ooh. Oh! Accidentally went down an alley. Flashes! Flashes with baseball bats! Shooting diagonally is an absolute pa Oh! It's a pain. What? <laughs> oh, you, you can jump when you're on the ladder. You can't jump in any other situation. I presume there's health somewhere on the screen that I can't see. Right, using anything other than the gun seems to be a waste of time.
Oh! Ambush! Well, we didn't like Dirty Harry then. Okay, Family Feud. This is one of these game show ones, isn't it? <laughs> one family game or two. Well, we're only one family here. Now we didn't, we didn't have this in the UK. I think I think we had something similar. I think it was called Family Fortunes. A A A A A A A. Murphy. Did you plan to do something with neural networking and or AI? Uh, probably not. The reason being is my previous history was in machine learning field and I am done with it. Uh, I'm, I'm done with machine learning in my life. Uh, what was the question? Make something, name something you make with eggs. What? 47 cakes. Name something you make with eggs. Well, oh, hang on. Make some egg uh, omelette. Oh, how do you spell omelette? Is it two M's? Omelette wasn't on the thing. You don't make an omelette with eggs. I bet you just, it was just spelt wrong. Name something you make with eggs. Uh, omelette. Okay. Oh, no. Okay, we're not doing Family Feud. Good, that was dreadful anyway. Oh, Pro Wrestling by Namcot. Interesting. Okay, I am the Black Shot. The one currently being thrown. Okay, there's obviously something I don't understand here. Oh. There were some some NES games were just awful when there was you've only got two buttons on the NES controller, so you not a great deal of choice and <laughs> like nothing seems to do anything. See, I don't, there's obviously some sort of mechanic there, which uh, if we had the instruction manual, we would know what to be pressing. Maybe I was supposed to press a button once I get picked up. All right, we'll try in the next round. I guess I lost that one. You are rewarded with seizures. Winner is strong bads. All right, let's try that again. Oh, it's a choose. Yeah. Kick. Oh, okay. Oh, no. So red flash means he gets to choose. Oh, we're out of the ring. I need to pick up the chair. Oh, he picked up the chair. Oh, well. Yeah, we didn't like that one. Okay, what have we got here? Oh, Dragon War. Oh, great. Yeah, well, we're going to get far in this, aren't we? There's no numbers! Oh, you would all pick two more minutes. We're not going to get anywhere in this. Literally no point. This should be one of the games that we have bought. <laughs> Today is a very important day. We shall go to the castle. 
I've raised you as a young lad for this very day. <laughs> Thank you, Zavirus. <laughs> Uh, search. <laughs> so, come with your mother. Oh, yep, okay. Obviously I was meant to search for something there which we didn't pick up. No, Alex, it's it's not my birthday. It's a joke to what's going on in the game. Oh, yes, it's us now. Well, we're going to the castle. Talk. Welcome to the castle. I did choose the fast message speed. It's not very fast, is it? <coughs> no, I'm guessing I need to get some weapons or something. It's best to go to Louisa's place at the west edge of town and find some companions. St oh. Right, you. St status, there we go. Info, JX. Okay. Hero. See, items. Equip, JX. Copper sword. Who would make a sword out of copper? All of the different, like, metals. You wouldn't choose copper, would you? Brave hero, please bring peace to the world quick. No pressure, then. So I've got to travel to the west of town to find some companions. <laughs> Do you want to be my friend? Take a soldier, a pilgrim, and a wizard, but he's drunk. Ah, he looks like an archer. We need an archer. Goof-offs are really useless. If you want to take one along, wait until you get strong and just take one along for the laughs. No idea. Don't know what's happening. Who will you register? Have I, have I picked some friends? Uh, right, I want a soldier. Male. Fine. Is this the right person? Yes. Yes. Will you register B? Uh, we'll have a fighter. Male. All they have is clothes. No, not the right person. 
Yes. Yes. Who will you register? B. We'll try B again. Uh, this time we'll pick a pick a wizard, but wizards are always going to get sort of kills. Yes, strength one. Cypress stick. Yes. Okay. So are these people on my party now? Is that it? Uh, no. So if I leave, are they are they with me now? I don't think these people are with me. Uh, probably gonna need some medical herbs, aren't I? No. Right, let's uh, let's run out into the wilderness. I, I don't think I've got teammates. Status. Formation. Yeah, see, I have no companions. Where do I get them from? <laughs> oh, there's a well there. And this, this guy looks like a fighter, doesn't he? So join me then. Join me on my quest. Search the well. No. Right, so I've got no companions. I've registered a inventory. I've basically given my personal details to a stranger. This is where the game ends. Oh, eight slimes. Right. <clears throat> this is going to go well, isn't it? Hmm, I think I'm going to have to run. <coughs> I need some companions. <laughs> Eight slimes is like your first encounter. <coughs> Nothing, I want to cancel now, I'm done. Are you going to loan take a soldier, a pilgrim, and a wizard? Yeah. <laughs> ah, C list, okay. Yes. Okay, yep, yeah, Ragnar will do. Oh, there's the people I created, they're there as well. No. Right, so is she the person that I can sort of now give people to me? Add member. Yes. Stay whatever the scrolls of honor. Right. Uh, we're going to take this soldier that we created, A. You're adding A to your party. Yes. Excellent. Yes, I want to add B to my party. B. Right, now we've got to choose between Ragnar 
Choose between Ragnar, uh, what were the other names? Tharon and uh, Gorbit or something. Petrus. Uh, I think, okay, we want a pilgrim then. Petrus, yes. Don't know what another world does, but you know, at, at this point, don't care. No, right, so I've got my three companions. Excellent, I have buddies, there they are. <laughs> so now, we can take on those slimes. Four slimes now. Right, so fight, fight, uh, just fight for now, and fight. What spells have we got? Blaze! They're not very exciting, the battles, are they? It's like, you can barely tell what's going on. Yeah, Mushroom, I kind of agree with you. It's, uh, oh, these these don't look as fun. Right, fight. Black Raider. I can't choose a particular one, I don't think. Select an arrow. Oh, you can choose to sort of fight yourself. Uh, fight and accidentally stuck your power. It's a bit, bit sensitive. The old down click there. Uh, fight, fight, fight. And what, I just wanted to see what spells... Uh, oh, heal. Oh, heal's useful, because uh, I need to heal myself. So don't say we don't have democracy on the OLC server. Look at this. You all get to vote for uh, how we're spending our evening. Actually, probably not for much longer by the looks of it. Hey, leveled. <laughs> so after this, you'll play Elite. <laughs> the uh, new things come out, hasn't it? You can now walk around on Elite. Is that any good, that? Oh. Won all sorts of things there. Can't remember why we were going to this village, but I think here we are. Looks very similar to the other village. Village of Reeve. The shop deals in tools. No, I don't want anything. Did you obtain the thief's key? No. I hear there is a cave in the forest south of this village that connects to the Tower of Najima. Guessing I need a thief's key then. When you walk outside of town you may encounter things in some suspicious places. It's not good enough to look from a distance. Get up real close. The guy... So, ah, I don't know, he's in a hut of some description. There we go. Good afternoon. Welcome to the Wafer is in. Uh, eight pieces of gold. Yeah, sure. Heal. Uh, well, we'll leave Reeve and just go and explore the forest to the south. Ah, so there's a patch of different texture there in the forest. We're going to have a look at that. Right, rats. Oh, no, not rats. Horned rabbits. Uh, I've not 
got much magic points. Well, a lot happened after that battle. No, I was exploring this. There we go. Guessing it's locked, right? Giant anteaters. So not rats. It's always rats. Oh, we've gone green. Why have we gone green? Does that mean I've been poisoned? Uh, item. Medical herb. Don't know what it does. Uh, we'll fight... Will blaze uh, and oh oh we got enough we had enough dragon warrior okay what have we got ninja gaiden great well I should point out that I am not Arcus I don't think we'll get to any point where we can hear the good music, I'm afraid. <laughs> I don't know how to do the uh, the wall jump. Why is he just walking around with boxing gloves? Darkest would do, isn't it? I presume it's like some special weapon I'm supposed to have, which I've not picked up. Or there's a special button I can press to unleash Ninpo or whatever it is. I don't know. Okay, the Knight of Diamonds. ASCII! Wizardry. World of Wizardry. Start game. Ugh. Some Gilgamesh's Tavern. Add. Fighter. Whatever. Yeah, just do it. All of them. Yeah, perfect. Leave. Go to. Edge of Town. Uh, training Grounds. Leave Castle Adventures in no nope. trading post no nope. edge of town that's where we're up to okay maze no nope. 
restart an out party. No characters are in this maze. <sighs> Create whatever. This is fun, isn't it? What is this? Yes. Human. Good. Oh, Dungeons and Dragons nerds are the worst. Oh, pressing all the buttons, nothing makes any difference. Just go. Yeah, mage, whatever. Yeah. This is awful. Imagine being given this at Christmas. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I just want to see something that's not ASCII. <laughs> Why is it ASCII? Oh, good. Oh, <laughs> this isn't much better, but... <laughs> Part versus the Space Mutants. <laughs> well, you heard it there, Morris. Democracy won. <laughs> right. Okay, that was not a good start. Don't know what hurts me. I've got no attack of any description. Can I jump on things? No. So that's what I wanted to deliver. Okay, so I can't jump on things. So it's an avoid them up at the moment. I go to Moe's. Okay, start button just makes it go all like that. Ah, coins, pause, x-ray specs. Ah, is that, well, that's x-ray specs, okay. So I want to use the phone. I guess it's just like a puzzle. There's a puzzle element to it. Oh! Millipede. Different playing the games without an instruction manual. This is just going to be millipede, isn't it? This is one of those things that I think would be fun to do as a bit of a coding challenge. Could you code millipede in like an hour? Or some some equivalent of millipede? You know, obviously, I think, great candidate for a code it yourself video, actually. The NES did its best with sort of arcade games, but its architecture didn't necessarily lend itself to it. Having the whole background as a table of discrete sprites like this. Was never, it's never ideal if you want sort of continuously moving stuff. So I'm fo focusing whilst there. Come here. I mean, I must confess, Millipede was even before my time. Oh. Well, these games would have been coded in 6502, of course. Yes. But I often felt that the, the sort of coin-operated arcade games, I don't think they ever translated well to being home home games like this. 
Oh, we've had enough of that. Overlord. Virgin Games. There's a guy giving a rude salute. Let's get on with it then. What have we got? Play. Overlord. What is this? Good luck, you'll need it. Uh, atmosphere processor. You rewire an Athos processor aborted. What is this? Overlord. Energy. This is one of those you need. Oh, prepare ship. Docking bay one is empty, so the ships. Wow. There's no sound. Do you want to buy an atmosphere processor? Yes. A button to confirm. Added to your fleet. Right, so we've bought ourselves an atmosphere processor. That's nice. Okay. Let's go to our fleet. No, sh you have no ships yet. No? I thought I had some ships. What have we bought? Format report. Planet is already alive. Okay, I think we'll have to come back to that one at some point. Battle Toes and Double Dragon. Ugh. I'm just no good at sort of beat em up games. Certainly no TMR, that's for sure. You can actually fall off the space stations. That's uh, that's caught me out a couple of times. Oh, no, we've had enough battle toes then, our arch rivals. So it's a great way of getting through games quickly. Oh, basketball. Don't even know which one I am. <laughs> okay, that's me. That's pass, right? Passing all the way down the court to myself. Oh no, that was shoot. Okay. What well, the? I'm sure that's not legitimate tackling in this spot. I'm just sort of punching each other. What? It 
This is confusing. Just go for it. Go for the shot. Okay. Are they all punching each other? So this is the problem with American sports games, is they never sort of made their way here. I want to know how, like, why, why can they all sort of attack each other? <laughs> Two points. At least we got some points, so it's not a, oh, no, okay, we've had him that. Our Kister's Ring. Stage one. No idea what this is going to be. Okay, well, interestingly, the B button is pause. Okay, well, I mean, archery. I like archery. The movement is horrible. You've got to move in a whole cell each time. Okay, I've picked up an inventory slot. It, it fools you into thinking that it's like free movement and it just isn't. I've got a key. I used arrows on that bush. Oh, stage two. Hey, we got through a level. That's a rare thing on Game Decider, isn't it? Oh, right, so he, he, right, health just disappears then. Wow! Because <laughs> you can't turn on the spot, that's really annoying. I wonder why they decided that should be a, a, a game dynamic. You can't, uh... See, see look, as you, as you turn, they have to move a square. You can't just turn on the spot. Now, if, if that means if I'm in a position where the enemy is in front of me, I can't move into that cell. Ugh. Awful. Uh, don't know. This tree looks different. Oh, no, okay, we've had enough of that. Oh, Pictionary. Well, I think Pictionary is probably a place to leave it there. Uh, so, uh, thank you all for joining us. Thank you for trying out a Game Decider stream. I know it's a bit strange. And we started off with Entity Component Systems and Templated Asset Pool. So it's been a properly uh, uh, evening of variety, I think. So I'm going to call it a day there and say thank you, everybody. <laughs> it's been silly and a bit different, and I'll see you all on Tuesday. Take care.